Okay, I'm going to let the screens catch up a little bit. If you are on the page and you don't see anything happening, then what you need to do is you need to hit refresh and you need to hit the little play button in the middle and your computer will catch up with my computer. So um, just hit the play button, hit refresh on your screen and um, everything will catch up. There's a little bit of a delay so just give it a second and in a minute you will see small business marketing in a planned community setting. That's the word you'll see on the screen. Looks like everybody's getting caught up. And as soon as I see everything caught up, I'm going to hit the go button. Okay, so this is Valerie Van Boeven, and this webinar is for residents of Newtown, for um, small business owners in Newtown. And I just wanted to give you some presentations over the next couple months or so uh, that talk about how to get set up for marketing. Um, so we're going to do the first one tonight, and I am recording this. It's called Small Business Marketing in a Planned Community Setting. And the, here's our agenda. This is what I said I would talk about. So for our first session, one of four, we will cover, and your screen may take a minute to catch up, and that's okay. I'm watching so I can make sure everybody's caught up to me. But in this first session, we're going to talk about the basics every business owner needs for success in a community with high internet usage, high word of mouth referrals, and low foot traffic. And we're going to talk about the importance of a real website, what type, how to get one without spending an arm and a leg. We're going to talk about the importance of a blog, what, what, what is it, why, and what difference does it really make. We're going to talk about the importance of Facebook business pages, correctly done and the importance of other social media accounts, what to focus on and what to leave behind. We're also going to talk about email newsletters, do you need them, what kind and how often. So that's a lot to cover. I will be sending the replay out so you guys can watch this video if you want. Um, but uh, again, there's a little bit of a delay, but I'm just going to keep on forging ahead and anybody who wants to can watch the replay as well. Okay, so uh, Newtown Community Challenges for Small Business, and this is stuff that most of us already understand and know, and we're not going to get into the dynamics of why this all is because we can't solve it tonight, but I just want you to know that I understand what's going on here too, and that is that you know we have low foot traffic, and it's much worse in the winter months, so that's really hard on everybody. Um, we are a busy community. We have families. Everybody's got lives. Everybody has to go to work. Uh, everybody has kids and not everybody, but you know what I mean. They're very busy, busy community. So stopping to shop at the local stores for home decor and things like that. I mean, you know, that may not may not be on our radar screen today if Susie has, uh, you know, piano lessons and um, Joni has to go to T Ball or something. So um, the other thing that I noticed, and this is a uh, sort of a function of, of, I went to Kimswick not too long ago, and of course it's a little more ramshackle than I remember, but I went to Kimswick with a girlfriend of mine and we had lunch and we walked around the town a little bit, we went to the Blue Owl of course, um, and what I noticed about, about that town, and of course they've been doing this a lot longer, but you know it's good to learn from a, a small town, a small community that has been around a while. Uh, trying to do retail sales and uh, the businesses promote each other very well and they all promote all of the events that are going on with little postcards um, that talk about the next event coming up and I'm sure there's some kind of you know business association there in Kimswick that passes those out to all the business owners they're on the counters when you check out all of the upcoming events. There's also a brochure that has a map in it that, that shows you where all the different shops are. So all the businesses in Kimswood promote each other. And for the most part here in Newtown, we do not do that, uh, with a few exceptions. But for the most part, you know, we don't have a brochure that lists all the businesses that are available in Newtown sitting on our counters um, so that people can walk around town after they get done eating or after they get done shopping at our store and go to another store. Uh, we just don't do it and I think we should. Community events to draw outsiders into Newtown are, are limited to music and summertime and you know what and, and when I say that I mean we do have a good draw on most of those and that's awesome but the bad news is that that's kind of the only thing that we've done to get people to come to Newtown and there's so much more to life 
and so many more things we can do. Um, and if you use Kimswick as an example, whether it is good or bad in someone's opinion, uh, they have craft fairs and they have like their winter wonderland and they have, you know, they go to great lengths to draw people from miles and miles away to their annual stuff. And uh, so they, and they have something every, every quarter at least in Kimswick. So there's some other things to think about. Music is awesome. Of course, I love music, love having the bands out here and all the entertainment. But there's also a place for some other things that we might be thinking about. We uh, have a lot of empty storefronts, which is not uh, doesn't help the stores that are next to the empty storefronts. And we have businesses that we've all seen come and go. And uh, we need better internal community support. We all know that. And we need better outreach to St. Charles County and to the St. Louis area. So these are all things that we can do better that we're faced with. Um, but we can't fix it all at once. But you can fix your business first. And having talked to so many business owners here in Newtown, uh, there's there's a lot of things that I think that when you put together a business plan and you commit to a monthly rent or you buy a building or you you get ready to do something here in Newtown, I think over time people get the fact that it's it's not an easy road to hoe here in Newtown as, with, as far as retail goes and even restaurants and things like that. But um, putting together a business plan that includes everything you're going to do for marketing is so important and that has to include the internet. If it doesn't, you're missing out on a huge population. So that's why we're doing this. So the basics every business owner needs for success in a community with high internet usage, high word of mouth referrals, and low foot traffic. Number one, you need to have a website. All of your competition all over the St. Louis area and St. Charles County have websites. You have to have a website. In this mobile environment, and, and recently um, the chairman of Google was giving some speech somewhere like he always does, and he said, they said, if you could sum up 2014 in one sentence, what would you say as far as internet goes? And he said, I can sum it up in one word, and that word is mobile. And you have to understand that people are on their tablets, they're on their iPads, they're on their phones. Um, they are looking for a place to eat, they're looking for a place to shop, they're looking for the closest pet groomer, they're looking for lots of different things. If you don't have a website that's properly put together with your local information on it, then you are going to be missed. So you must have a website and it must have all the right things on it. Just having a website isn't the answer, but having it correctly um, put together website is important too. A Facebook page done correctly, super important. Having content on all of these things is important and I'll tell you what that means in a minute. Other social media, um, Pinterest, LinkedIn, or business appropriate sites like for restaurants, having Urban Spoon, uh, being on Yelp, Foursquare, Google Plus, Google Places. If you have a storefront, there's a difference in the social media sites that you should be on and I'll talk about this all, all together. But um, if you have a restaurant, there are certain websites that you need to be on in order to be successful and to, to show up in all the places that you need to show up to get that extra customer. You have to have that extra edge. That's, that's the only way around it. You've got to be able to be on all these sites. And then if you have a storefront but you're not a restaurant, but you're, you actually have a physical location, then you need to be on all the places where people can check in. If you're a service provider and you go out to other people's houses, some of these uh, things on here aren't going to be as important because people aren't checking in at your location. You are actually going to their place, of, the, of their home or their workplace to do services. So it depends on what kind of business you are, but for the most part, these are the things that you need. Yes, you need a website. It is not optional in a mobile environment. I cannot stress that enough. If you've started a business and you don't have a website, you need to rethink your budget and you need to put in a website uh, as part of your marketing budget because without it, uh, it's a fail. It, it really is. I, 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 can, I do this for a living, but I can't tell you how important that is. Word of mouth is awesome. Facebook is awesome. But you got to have something where people can go if for no other reason to look at your brochure of products, services, or whatever you have. So where can you get a cheap website? Because, of course, I do websites, but this is not what that's about, and we don't do them cheaply. So if you want to get a cheap website, you need to have one that's done fairly nicely, but you can go to one-on-one. -on -one. 
You can go to GoDaddy and use a website tonight, pretty cheap. I've seen Squarespace, Weebly, Jigzy, Snap Pages, and Yola. Uh, a couple of these are recommended by Mashable, which is a, a, a reputable online uh, blog, sort of, so to speak. But I've used website tonight in the past, and if you don't have any other way to get something done, and you're not a web designer, uh, you could at least go to GoDaddy and get a website. Um, or you go to one on one, or you go to Squarespace. You can check out fees, you can check out all the different things that they offer, and you can decide what's best for you. But any of those will work for a small website with content. Okay, here's the thing you need to remember about your website. And I'm going to show you an example here in just a second. Um, what kind of problem does your business solve? Every business is in business because they solve a problem or they serve a need, right? So the people that I service mostly are home care agencies, and the home care agency does it solves your elder care problem. It might be that mom or dad needs help in the home, or they need help but don't know who to turn to, or whatever the case. So all of our clients solve a very specific, very emotional problem, and that is what to do with our aging parents. Um, you, your business, might solve the problem of helping people have a cleaner home, helping people figure out what they want to do for lunch or dinner, um, your business might be helping people have a better smile or maybe a bigger fence in their backyard or maybe their family photos haven't been done in two years and they need to get that done or maybe your business is about unique gift items or maybe your business is about being a time saver or maybe you sell home decor you help people do interior design or maybe you're a dog walker or maybe you're a child care provider but whatever the case you're solving a problem or you're helping solve a problem for somebody out there who has one and you you are an expert in that field because you do this all day long so having said that your website needs to help people understand that you can solve a problem so your website is the problem solver you have less than one second to capture someone's attention and keep them on your website here is a, a picture of and your web your uh, screens will catch up in just a second this is a picture of a home care website that is a problem solver. So um, this is the one of the latest ones that we've done and, and I just wanted to show you all of the different ways this website solves a problem. You don't have to think about how to contact these people or why you might contact these people. So I'm going to go forward one more here. So the object of the game here is to solve my problem and don't make me think. There's a really good book out there that talks about, uh, it's called Don't Make Me Think, and it's about website design, and you may not be interested in the book, but I can tell you that uh, that is exactly what your website should be doing. It should be helping people understand what immediate action they need to take to get a hold of you, to either buy your product or buy your service or talk to an expert like you about their situation. If it's too messy or too garbled up with crap, uh, they, they'll never do anything because there are too many options. They'll never make a decision. Don't make me think. So if you look at this website that you have in front of you, um, and it'll come back on your screen in just a second, I have the next time you see it, it'll have big arrows pointing next to it. Every big arrow that you see on the screen helps solve a problem or it helps tell the person looking at the website what to do. So at the very top, you see that um, it says for more information or a free consultation, contact us below or call 832-295-6456. Now this is somebody in Houston, so don't dial the number, but uh, it, this tells people exactly what to do. You either fill out the form or you pick up the phone and you make a call. That is it. There are only two options on this home page. Now there are other things you can do. You can click on about us or home care services or this or that or whatever, but really the big focus is um, the, the person standing in there saying my mom needed help at home. Sheila's Angels helped us. They can help you too. Call today or fill out the form on the right. That's all you need to do. And this scrolls, by the way, there are three different messages on this home page. And then you can see that those messages are repeated again at the bottom of the page. Home care services, Alzheimer's home care, and Vetus' program. So 
It's about filling out the form or making a phone call. Those are the only two things you want people to do to get a hold of you, unless you sell product. And then you want to make it easy for them to find the product and make the purchase. Easy, easy, easy. Do not make me think or I will go away and find a competitor that's an easier person to follow. Okay, let's talk about website content for a minute. Now, every website that we design has what we call, it has a blog on it. And if you don't know what a blog is, a blog is a web blog. So that means that you are putting articles and information about your services or about your community or about yourself or about, you know, um, the latest uh, in warm soup recipes or whatever it is you want on your blog. But hopefully whatever you're putting on there has something to do with the business that you're in. Um, if you do dog grooming, soup recipes don't make any sense. But um, so uh, we always have a blog. And every page of the website that you see has, and you'll see this in a minute when the screen changes, but it, it has a uh, call to action on it. There's always a form to fill out and there's always a phone number to call. That's all there is. And so what you're seeing is content. You're seeing that every single week without fail, these people have a new article. And that article talks about how they can help people in the local area. Okay. So what is great content? Now, in my world, it's 500 word article, which you may say, oh my goodness, who writes 500 words? Well, guess what? Our company probably buys 400 articles or more a month. And they're all 500 words or less, or between four and 500 words, plus photos. Everything you put on your website should be unique and not copied from other websites. It should be about your niche. In, in other words, it should be about, if you're a dog groomer, it should be about dogs. If it's, um, if it's about, if you're a restaurant, it should be about restauranty things. If, it, if you're a diet person, it should be about diets. So it should be also about your community. If you're out and about and you're, you know, doing a community event, you're hosting something, you're having a special, it shouldn't just be on Facebook. It needs to be on your website too. Talk about it everywhere, not just in one place. Your community involvement is what people like to see. So if you're going to be at the next craft bazaar or whatever it is at the new town uh, 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 Newtown building there, the, you know, if you're going to do something like that, then you need to put it on your Facebook, you need to put on your blog, you need to take pictures at the event, take a picture of your booth, take a picture of the crowd, take a picture of yourself with Richard who may have put it together, or with Lisa, or with somebody, or you're the person that's standing next to you, and put that stuff on your blog, but also put it on Facebook. And if you, if you know what you're doing, you can even get everything from your blog to Facebook automatically. But um, you need to make sure all your community involvement goes on there. And these things that you put on your blog and Facebook need to be unique. Google is very picky about duplicate content. So if you take a great article that you found in the New York Times and you copy it, you paste it onto your website because you thought it was really great, not only will it not get counted, or not get indexed or not get, you won't get credit for putting it there. It'll be a complete waste of your time because someone else already wrote it first and it's a copyright violation. So you don't want to be copying other people's content. You come up with your own and if you can't afford to, if you can't afford the time to do that or the creativity, you can hire somebody to do that. If you go on Elance or Odesk or any of those places, you could hire somebody to write articles for you really cheap. Um, now I don't recommend going super cheap because frankly they'll sound bad. But if it's about your community, you can write a little brief, just like you're writing an email to somebody about how great the event was. You're talking to your best friend and write up a little paragraph about how great the event was and put a picture in it. It's that easy. Um, and then Google authorship is something we'll talk about. I left that bullet in there from another um, lecture I gave, but we'll leave that off for another time. But Google authorship means that you are a verified Google author and that you, um, your face shows up next to all your articles online. That's kind of advanced and we'll talk about that another day. Let's talk about Facebook. Because I know a lot of you are wondering if Facebook, it has all, if you've done all the right things with Facebook, if you have a business page that's looking good. Um, so I want to kind of show you some of the different pieces of Facebook that are right and talk to you about some of the ones that are wrong. Okay, so in a minute, your screen will forward to uh, a snapshot of our friend Wendy's uh, Facebook business page. Uh, I did put this together for her, so it's not your ordinary cupcake. And what I want to talk to you about is a couple of things. First of all, 
the cover page was designed specifically for Facebook. And you can see that there is a call to action, meaning a way to get a hold of Not Your Ordinary Cupcake, right there on that cover page. And you should have yours this way too. Some generic flaky picture is not necessarily the right thing to do on a Facebook business page. You need to make it look like a business. And if this is the only thing that you're going to be able to do, because uh, you're not going to have a website for some reason, which would also not be good, but that's the way you're rolling, that's the way you're rolling, and Facebook is free. So have your Facebook cover page created and have it created correctly with a call to action and also um, lots of good pictures of your stuff. So we took her logo that somebody in town did for her and we put her phone number where you can reach her and um, and that's how we got, you know, and then some pictures of kind of a collage of different pictures and things like that. Now this can be changed anytime, so it's kind of getting old and I probably need to change it, but for right now, uh, this serves the purpose. And of course, the little picture, uh, kind of the, the little uh, profile picture thing, that can be anything at all, but um, her, her logo was long, so we decided to go with a picture of some of her creations. Now, um, a couple of things to note about this also is that uh, the little, I guess, tabs you want to call them, across the bottom there it says Cupcakes, Place an Order, and Our Website. If you click on any one of those, they will take you right to her website. The, you do not stay on her Facebook page if you click on any of those. So if you click on Cupcakes, it'll take you to the Cupcakes page on our website. If you take click on Place an Order, it'll take you to the Order page. And if you click on our website, it'll just take you to the home page of the website. Highly recommend that you jazz up that stuff down there. You have space to use. Use it to your advantage. Do not leave it sitting there. Also, um, there's other things that you can do. For instance, uh, do you see that she has 683 likes? and 29 people are talking about this. Right underneath the name Not Your Ordinary Cupcake in black, you can see she has 683 likes. There are some advanced things that you can do with your Facebook business page um, that help you so you can get uh, your um, more likes and it's like five dollars to do it and it's totally worth it. So I'll talk about that another time, but the first thing you need to do is create yourself a Facebook business page. Now I looked around before this webinar and I noticed that a lot of the people who have businesses here have great Facebook business pages already. Um, here are two URLs I want you to look at. The first one is make sure you're logged into Facebook when you do this uh, as yourself and then go to www.facebook.com forward slash pages and then pick local and you'll be able to see a lot of the folks in Newtown and on Main Street all their Facebook business pages and that'll give you tons of ideas about what you should be doing and then the other URL here the bottom one is how to create a Facebook page remember that a Facebook page should not be set up like a person so in other words you don't need to set up another profile and make it um, you know if your business name is ABC Home Care then your Facebook business, you don't go in and set up a profile with the first name ABC and the last name Home Care. You actually go to facebook.com forward slash pages forward slash create and you decide and for most of you, you are a local business. That's the category you would choose. Um, so for, for the most part, you want to put in and don't be afraid. Now some of you are home based business, so you may or may not want to use the maps and put your address in there. I have used my address as a home-based business for probably 10 years and I can tell you that only one goofy person has ever showed up at my door. Um, and I do business nationwide and have done so for a long time. Nobody's tried to come and kidnap my kids or do anything weird. Um, so I, I, you know, I take the risk. I don't mind it and it's totally fine. You all may have other reasons why you wouldn't want to do that. And if so, you can use a P.O. box or whatever. But um, I, I say leave it on there. Uh, you can see on the um, on Not Your Ordinary Cupcake that Wendy went in there and put home based business in parentheses so that people would know not to come to her house because it's a bakery. So it's not a bakery, it's not a real storefront, so they know not to do that. So, anyway, these are the two URLs. You can write them down, you can watch the replay. I'll send out the slides. You can go there, look at the people close to us, and then go create your own page. 
Okay, other social media accounts that are really important that you should have. First of all, if you're a professional service uh, uh, and you want to network professional to professional and get professional referrals, and I work in a niche that really does want that, um, not everybody does or not everybody cares about professional referrals, but um, I like to network with other business owners. And because of that, I have a very robust profile on LinkedIn.com. LinkedIn is not like Facebook. Facebook is for reaching out to your community and uh, putting up posts and things like that so that you can actually you know, network with the people closest to you. LinkedIn is about professional to professional networking. There are no 13-year-olds on LinkedIn.com. It's not interesting to them. Um, but you, if you're going to do LinkedIn, you need to put your profile picture up there. You need to be a human being, and this is about human being to human being correspondence, not business to biz, not your logo to your to someone else's logo. You need to be a human being on LinkedIn. You need to set it up that way, not as a business, and you need to join local St. Louis and St. Charles groups and network with those other business owners. So that's what LinkedIn is for. Or if you're looking for a job or if you're looking for investors or if you're recruiting LinkedIn is good for all of those things Pinterest.com for business now a lot of you who know what Pinterest is um, it is the internet's um, pin board so and it is most I, I would say not of course you know men are on there too but it's mainly I think a female demographic and perfect for those of you who serve a female demographic um, so there is an option to set up a business account. I would highly recommend doing that. You can always connect your business account to your uh, personal account if you want to, but you can also keep them separate. So for your business account, you're going to want to make sure you set it up um, with your business name and all that stuff. So Pinterest for business. If you're going to do it, you need to start pinning. And you need to look for your um, Facebook friends and all your contacts and start to get them to pin to your Pinterest boards for business too. Okay, Twitter. Everybody in Hollywood loves to tweet in Twitter. And it's becoming very popular. And perhaps if I was a restaurant or an entertainment venue or a musician or a band, I would absolutely do a Twitter. But if I am... A home care agency, I tell my home care agencies, you're never going to get a client in 140 characters or less. And my, my guess is that most of our little local small town businesses aren't either. But that's completely up to you. If you're going to do Twitter, do it right. Use it to your advantage. But I wouldn't waste my time on that. I would first do Facebook. Then I would do maybe LinkedIn if I need professional referrals. I would worry about Pinterest for business as opposed to just personal. You can do both if you're a very personal business. It's up to you. Um, for restaurants, I would make sure I was on Urban Spoon, Foursquare, Yelp. If you have a storefront, Foursquare and Yelp. If you're a place where people can check in, you want to be on Foursquare, Yelp, and those kinds of things. Um, if you have a business that's a service business, you probably need to be on Angie's list. And they do have a free listing option, although I know the paid stuff is probably nicer. But um, Angie's list is a good place to get on. And I think Service Magic might be another one. Uh, if you have a good business reputation, and I think there's obviously fees involved in this, but the Better Business Bureau is a really good thing to have on your website if you have an A plus rating. And it's also a good place to have a listing. So Angie's List, Better Business Bureau, for service businesses, those are awesome. For anybody, Better Business Bureau is awesome. Um, I personally don't do either of those because we're nationwide and and that just doesn't uh, make a whole lot of sense for us. But um, and we don't. I personally don't do Foursquare or Yelp because people don't check in here. I'm a service business, but if you are a service business, those are great accounts to have. Google Plus and Google Places. Nothing could be more important, and I'm going to have to do a, like a whole webinar just on that stuff, but you need to have a Google Places listing for business, and you can sign up for that for free, and they will want to send you a postcard or make a phone call to confirm that you are actually a place, and it is worth it to do that because people are on Google all day long searching for stuff, and if you don't show up on Google locally, you don't show up, period, and you will not get the client or the customer. So make sure your Google Places is robust. 
and make sure you put all the things in it that you can and make sure you have a Google Plus account to go with it. So those are really important things. So this is kind of my list. It depends on who you are. Google Plus and Google Places, in my opinion, is important for everyone if you want to be on the map and you want people to find you locally for what you do. Okay, let's talk about something else here, and that is follow-up failure. Follow-up failure is one of my favorite things to avoid, and um, I'm kind of bad at it because I get about 500 emails a day. So uh, follow-up failure means that you've met someone, someone has referred business to you, or you've made a connection at the local chamber event, or just, you know, milling around, you've just met someone and you forget to call them or email them and follow up and let them know about your business. And that is called follow-up failure. We all get busy and we all get crazy and follow-up failure is something that happens. So the one way you can avoid that is to have a monthly newsletter. And some people will groan and say, oh, I just delete all that stuff, it's all spam, blah, 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 blah. But let me tell you, when you have a good list, when you have, you know, let's say two or three hundred people on your newsletter list, the amount of orders, the amount of traffic in your business, the amount of back and forth conversation that will occur when that newsletter goes out is tremendous. So it is worth every penny you spend, if you spend any at all, on having a monthly newsletter. And there is a way to do this for free, by the way. Um, everybody you meet, everybody you know, every contact you have should be on your email newsletter list and your newsletter can go out. And if you are putting content on your website like I told you to every week, a little article, a little picture, a little something, if you're doing that, then you can make your um, newsletter be automated because your website has what's called an RSS feed. And your newsletter can pick up that RSS feed, turn those little things that you put on your website into little articles and send it out automated, looking very nice. Um, and you can send it out every month on your behalf when there's new content and you're off and running and you don't even have to touch it. All you have to do is keep adding those email addresses so that people, more and more people are getting your newsletter. So everyone on your list, your analytics traffic goes way up, meaning the amount of visitors that come to your website, your Facebook, goes way up when you have a newsletter. And it doesn't matter what the topic is. It doesn't matter if you're a restaurant or a dog groomer or a picture taker or you are a lawnmower person. There's always something to talk about. If you can commit to putting some content on your website, then you will get the business you want. That is the bottom line. So if communication goes up, the amount of inquiries, the appointments that you receive, the number of people wanting to know more about your business, your special, your stuff goes way, way up. Here is a picture of one of our clients' newsletters. Your screen will change in just a second. And um, this is very, very clean, very plain Jane, very easy. And it's from MailChimp.com and it is absolutely free. MailChimp has a free, a free uh, newsletter that will work easily with your website. Um, you can send it out to uh, anyone you want and there's always an opt-out at the bottom so if they don't want it they can always opt out. MailChimp.com, absolutely free. Now you can buy their upgraded plans and you can pay money but you don't have to unless you have like 12,000 emails going out every month then you would probably want to upgrade. Um, so, uh, most of our clients are always signed up for MailChimp. It works beautifully with their websites. They have better business because of a little newsletter like this. So that's what I recommend. Okay, let's talk about offline marketing. Offline marketing means not online, means in person, print ads, sponsorship, radio, and TV. These are all, um, other than in person networking, Internet marketing is going to be your cheapest way to go. So it's either internet or in person. Um, and both of those together can be absolutely a win-win. Print ads are always going to come your way. I would be very selective about that. Um, just having had a lot of experience in print ads, radio and TV, uh, I, I would just be selective about who you're going to use and why you're going to use them. I've seen some big fails. I've seen some $20,000 fails. I've seen some bigger fails than that and it's no fun to spend that kind of money. Most of us don't even have that kind of money to fail with. 
So uh, in-person networking is a huge issue. You need to be shaking hands, looking people in the eye, get out of your office, get out of your place of business, and go talk to other people. That's really important. Print ads, I would do low-cost print ads. It depends, again, who you are, what your business is. Um, anything that you can do in print can be done online better. And you know what? Yellow pages is a thing of the past. Uh, some of you may disagree with me, but I'm telling you, get it online. Everybody has a mobile phone in their hand. I'm telling you that's the way it is. Um, and uh, radio ads and TV ads are getting into some bigger bucks there, but for certain reasons those make sense. Um, I won't go into that today, but I'm just giving you the, all the offline stuff. In-person networking, it's good to combine your offline and your online. So every offline event, meaning those bazaars and those fairs that you go to, or um, like we did a Taste of Home show, all that stuff is an online announcement. If you want to see a good example of this, you could go to Wendy's website, which is um, nyocupcake.com. nyocupcake.com. You can see, if you look back through there, you can see that any event that was happening was also a blog post on her website. So any offline event you attend is an online announcement. Every connection with an email address should be added with, with, to your newsletter. So if you meet somebody and you get their business card, boom, newsletter list. Every contact should be sent follow-up emails. You can't forget to do that. That's follow-up failure. Every radio ad can be used as an MP3 on your website. Every TV ad can be used as a video on your blog or YouTube. And every print ad can be used as content. So there's always a way to use anything you're doing in the offline world. Use it in the online world, too. Step by step. So you need to plan your offline activities for the next 60 days. Think about all you're going to do for the rest of January and the rest of February. We've got holidays coming up um, like Valentine's Day. We have my birthday. Uh, we have all kinds of stuff coming up. So there's always a reason to celebrate and there's always a reason to put something on your website. Even if the weather's crappy, you can still get people coming in and inquiring if you do the right thing. you got to get on it. It's not a... Well, I don't know how to do that. It is a learn how to do that and do it, and your business will thrive. Events, networking, offline ads. Plan your content for the next 60 days. What can you talk about in the next 60 days? If you're a lawnmower person and it's the dead of winter, what can you tell people about getting prepared to get on your list to have your lawn have their lawn mowed by you this spring? What can you start start telling people about? Um, you know, brush and debris collection or trimming stuff or making sure your plants are safe for the winter or what about those decks that need to be refinished or whatever it is. You can talk about that now and prepare people for the upcoming months. You should be posting to, on your blog at least once a week. You should use keywords and photos. So if you're a housekeeper, you should be putting in words like cleaning your home or keeping your home clean or you know, I don't know, clean bathrooms or whatever it is that people are, whatever their pain is, you want to address it and sh tell them how you can solve that problem. So use those keywords. What do people look for when they're looking for a housekeeper or a dog groomer or a, a pet sitter? Um, use photos. Always use photos. Anytime you can. Don't be afraid to put your face out there and make sure you're using photos to your advantage because People love to see what's going on. They want to see it when they're online. They don't want to read it all. You know, they want to see the picture and then read the caption. That's what it's about. And if for, for nothing else, then get help. There's all kinds of people out there that can help with all of this stuff. I'm happy to answer questions, um, but you need to get help if, if you're at a loss for where to go next. So that's a lot of information in a very short, short period of time. Um, what I would recommend is that if you have questions, and I could open up the lines, but then the lines would be really loud and kind of crazy. So what I would recommend is that if you have questions, <clears throat> that you just go ahead and send me a private message on Facebook or email me because I've emailed all of you. So I know you have my email address. And uh, you can send it to Valerie at ltcep.com. That's V-A-L-E-R-I-E -E at ltcep.com. That's L like Larry, T like Tom, C like cat, E like egg, P like Paul.com. Or just look for Valerie Brothers Van Boeven on Facebook. And yes, I'm married to Charlie Witzel, and yes, I'm the Witzel Triplets mom, although no one ever seems to know that. And that's okay, but <laughs> or look for Charlie, and, <clears throat> and he will direct you to me. 
and I'll answer any questions that you might have. I don't mind doing that. So um, good luck to you, and I will schedule the next one. And we will do one of these in person, by the way. Uh, when the weather gets nicer and people are able to get out a little bit, we'll do an evening together so we can do in-person question and answer. I think that'll be great. We'll kind of review all the things we went over. So with that, I'd like to say thank you very much, and I will be posting the replay tomorrow. Thanks, everybody. Uh, get working on your Facebook business pages and get work the, working on your websites. Bye-bye.